Hello, I'm Dr. Jim Wright, and today we're going to show you how we catch amberjack. In the opening, you saw what an amberjack looked like, and it's basically the shape of a big bass. It ranges anywhere from just a few ounces, and we call those buoy jacks here in Virginia, up to around 110, 115 pounds. The all tackle world record is 155 pounds, and it was caught on the Challenger Banks off Bermuda. The location of Amberjack is anywhere where there's warm water. This is not a cold water fish. We first start catching them when the seawater temperature stays anywhere from 60 to 62 degrees consistently and never drops below 60 degrees. Where do we find Amberjack? We find him around structure. The structure can either be a wreck, a tower, a buoy, a jetty, a bridge, or a pier. But any one of these areas will contain the food that goes into the food chain that are going to attract amberjack. Now, let me show you what's really on that hook and on that line. What's really on it is anywhere from four to six feet of 80 to 130 pound test line wrapped individually so that we have a once egg sinker in line with a hook on the end. The only variable in this setup is I like to use a bigger hook like I showed you over here and the second thing is sometimes we use up to a six foot length of this line so that we can control the fish better. If you have a low transom it's easy to use a small leader line but basically we like to have about a six foot leader this one's tied for demonstration purposes and it's very short. Again wrap each one of these individually so that they'll be easy to untangle. Spend your time out on the water fishing not rigging. You rig when you're thinking about it days ahead of time. Now let's show you what type of equipment that we use to catch these fish with. First we're going to talk about the rods. Okay the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use trolling rods. Now these are heavy. These are not stand-up rods. These are the same rods that we go for marlin and for big yellowfin tuna and bluefin tuna for. And again, these are trolling rods. They're boat rods. They're not stand-up. You sit down in a chair just like this when you hook a fish that's as big as the amberjack that we catch. Our next rod is a stand-up rod and it's going to be a fairly heavy stand-up rod. And again, first thing I want you to see is the length of this rod. It only comes to about here. This is for 50 to 80 pound class amberjack. And believe me, we need all of this. The line on these is anywhere from 50 to 80 pounds. We don't need anything much more heavy than 80 pounds.
Now if we find that we're in a school of amberjack that are relatively smaller, that is the 30 pound or the, up to the 40 pound, we can use a lighter line and a lighter rod. We can get a tremendous battle. Again, we're using stand-up equipment. This one's a little longer, but it's the same type of a situation. We're not going to sit down in a chair. We're going to stand up and fight this fish at the back of the boat. This is a 50-pound amberjack that I caught on 12-pound test line. And one hour later, we landed it. Nice fish on light tackle. This time a three foot barracuda one. Are you getting all this on camera, Peter? Yeah, I got it all. Good. Oh God, that's beautiful. Good shots, good shots. Every time I do that, you want to tag him and release him or what? If you want. Okay. Oh, be careful. You know he's good. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Get, get him in his gills or something, Hugh. Be careful. Hold him up too when you if you get a chance. Yeah, hold him up so that hold him up so you take a picture of him. Yeah. Now Chip just pulled our eel pot and this is what we've got in them and this is how we catch live eels. This is what they look like. And I swear, you tell me that those surgical tube eels aren't a heck of a lot easier to rig than these are going to be. All these do is curl up all around your arm, make a big mess, and if you see how Chip's got one, they're not easy to grasp even, let alone to rig, and we like them live. And that glove he's got on is the only way you're ever going to be able to hold one. They don't bite, but they are slimy and they do wiggle. Big ones out there too. Like I said, some of those are hundred pounders. Now this is the way we entice the fish up behind the boat sometimes when we're gonna cast a fly out there. Because with all those fish down there, they get excited when they see that thing splashing on the water up on the surface. secret here is no hook. What do you mean he's got a tag in him? Every so often we get a pleasant surprise. He's got a tag in him. This tag has moss growing on it. And it's probably been in the fish for cut some time. Cut the tag Yeah, cut the tag off, put another one in it, and put him back. That thing's covered yeah, with moss. That's a good idea. Let's get the length on this one. And then watch that tag so it doesn't get flown overboard. 48. 48 inches. Okay. 